Happy lunch hour, gang. Okay, uh, we'll start here. As you guys have all seen, the hurricane has now hit Florida. It's actually all the way up in Georgia at the time I'm recording this, which is about 1030. Uh, it's going to kind of come into a little problem. Yet another one, okay? You know, what doesn't work well in wet conditions? Electricity? Yeah. <laughs> you have a tendency to die <laughs> when you mix those two. Okay. <laughs> Now, I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I'm going to say that there's probably not a whole lot of the a lot of people on this channel that are saving up for their new electric vehicle, okay? But I'm going to give you some information here that might be important, okay? You know, it's pretty interesting when the left is starting to eat its own, and there was an interesting piece that CNBC put out about how electric vehicles aren't the future. Okay. CNBC. Okay. You know, NBC. It's funny. The research they used was from Deutsche Bank, uh, S&P Global Commodity Insights, and the World Economic Forum and said, it's not feasible. Okay. Why? We don't have, not, not we as in the United States, we as in Earth, don't have the resources to make it happen. Now, supposedly global sales of electric vehicles are supposed to reach about 13.8 million electric vehicles this year, which is still a pittance for the amount of cars that are on the road, okay? But... Deutsche Bank also, or I'm sorry, S&P Global Commodities Insights figures that by 2030, there's going to be the desire to have 30 million cars, EVs a year. Okay. What do you need for those cars? Batteries. What do those batteries need in the way of raw materials to work? Lithium. Okay. That's the main core component. You hear me talk about solar generators, lithium iron phosphate batteries, lithium ion batteries. Lithium is the key component, okay? Now I want to give you this. Last year, in 2022, Australia was the world's largest producer of lithium mine, or lithium, okay? With an output of about 61,000 metric tons. Chile was number two with 39,000 metric tons, and China was number three at 19,000. So combined between the top three, they produced about 119,000, or uh, I'm sorry, yeah, 119,000 metric tons of it. Argentina's fourth, uh, Brazil is fifth, Portugal and the United States share the sixth place, okay? You know, the United States has eight-tenths of 1% of the global share of lithium production, okay? So just give you this as an idea. Total for 2022 in what we had in the way of lithium produced was about 130,000 metric tons worldwide, okay? Here's where the problem comes in. According to Deutsche Bank, next year, we will have a deficit of what is needed or what is requested, let's put it that way, to run these uh, EVs, okay, to make these batteries, we will have a deficit of somewhere between 40 and 60,000 metric tons of lithium. That's about a third to 40%, guys, okay? Like I said, the World Economic Forum, you know, another one of those great authoritarian regimes that we have in the world that knows everything. They have come out, and said by 2030, they expect we're going to need to, main, to produce the electric vehicles that they want to see on the road. Three million metric tons of lithium produced a year. What did I say we're at? 130,000 now? <laughs> right. Okay. So three. we can go from 130,000 metric tons to 3 million metric tons in seven years. That sounds like a, a feasible goal, right? 
So this is what I'm saying is if there aren't enough or there isn't enough lithium to produce all these batteries for all these EVs or to replace them when they wear out, what are they going to do? How are they going to come up with more electric batteries? In other words, don't get rid of your gas-fueled car. Again, not that any of you guys probably are planning on doing it. So this in itself tells you what the problem is that they have no answer for. They, I mean, there is, they can't just, well, you know what, we'll just make more. It doesn't work that way. Okay. You know, this has got to be mined. And again, we can go into the old joke. How are they mining it? They got to move 90,000 metric tons of earth with diesel powered equipment to mine the metric ton of Lithium, okay, you know, so again, it's certainly not green. But it, what, it, what it basically tells you is the cost of lithium supply and demand again is going to go up and up and up. The cost of those EVs is going to go up and up and up. If they expect that we're going to have 30 million people wanting an EV by 2030 and we need 3 million metric tons of lithium to do it, we have a problem if we're only producing 130,000 metric tons, okay? So how does this affect you and me? Well, what's one of the things that I talk about, a lot of other channels talk about, is your battery backup system that you're going to have, which if you want electricity, you're probably going to need, okay? I mean, even if it's just a power outage, Tell me how many people in Florida, how many people in Georgia today are going, damn, you know what? Uh, it might be a good idea if we have a generator, right? You know, I mean, as of right now, let's see if I can find this out. Uh, as of right now, we are talking about Florida having 268,000 people without power. Georgia is at about 20,000. So we're just short of 300,000 people from the hurricane without power right now. I'm betting there's a few of those that wish they had a generator. I'm betting there's a lot of them that probably have gas generators. You know, again, after everything that happened with Sitgo and putting diesel in the gas fuel tanks, yeah, well, maybe those gas generators ain't working too well. So we get back into the solar generators. So what is going to happen? Right now, and you guys know because we've been doing stuff with solar generators for a couple of years, the price of solar generators has been coming down, which is good, okay? You're going to expect to see the price of them go back up or the availability of them to disappear, okay? Again, supply and demand. If there's less lithium, there's going to be less solar, solar generators, which means there's going to be, if there's the same amount of demand, the price has to go up. If the demand goes up, then the price goes up even more. So it behooves you to get your solution for your power as soon as possible because the prices don't look like they're coming down much more anytime soon and in fact going the exact opposite way. Now, could you get a gas generator? Absolutely, okay? And I highly suggest everybody have a fuel whatever it is, whether it's a gas generator, a diesel generator, a propane generator, whatever. I highly recommend that everybody have at least something along those lines. But again, that comes into the same point. As gas gets more expensive, as propane gets more expensive, et cetera, et cetera. You, know, you start seeing that your outlay of your hard-earned dollars or hard-earned whatever it's going to be here over the next few years, okay, is going to be more and more and more to get power to your house. At least the sun is free. You know that I am not a proponent of solar on a large scale by any means. On an individual scale, it's decent. It's not the bee's knees. It's not the end all be all. And I'm going to get into that here a little bit this more this week about what I'm doing and what its limitations are. 
but you need to really start thinking about your your necessities what is going to be a requirement you know there's luxuries and necessities you know having a doorbell okay that's a luxury you know somebody can knock that works fine you don't need to power that but having lights that's helpful okay having a way to cook or stay warm or stay cool or whatever those get closer to necessities okay you know Air conditioning is still somewhat of a luxury, but, you know, a fan as at a minimum, that's probably the, the bare bones you want to go. But, again, when the left starts eating their own, and when you have CNBC and Deutsche Bank and S&P coming up and saying, hmm, you know what? The EV craze is doomed. You know, maybe that information will get to the White House and Joe can put it as number 8,462,307 things he has failed in in his presidency. Bimble out.